for any possible massively large number that you might want, what must what must be true? Um, there exists a delta. There exists a delta such that, and now the claim I make is that if I get pretty, if I get sufficiently close to A, then the Y values will be larger than M, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, for all X, if I get really close to A, specifically within delta um, of A, then, finish it off. F of X, F of X could be greater than, than M. F of X is greater than M, yep. So, Okay, so this gives us a definition. So what we have now is not only the formal definition of a limit, but we also have a formal definition of what it means for, for a limit to be at infinity and a formal definition of what it means for the limit to be infinity. There's like two more things I guess we could do if we go really fast. Um, there's, one more, there's one more thing that we, I forgot to do. Um, what does it mean, because we've been also talking about this like limit as x approaches a from the left business, right? The limit as x approaches a from the left of some function is l. Um, so suppose I have some function where it's doing like this. And then this is m and this is l. Do we agree that the limit as x approaches a from the left of this function is l? Do we agree? Yeah, at yeah we agree. OK, so what can you, can you give me a formal definition of this? This is true if and only if. Someone adapt our, our epsilon delta definition to deal with the case where now we're only talking about the limit from the left. Yo. Um, there's some delta such that um, no matter how far, um, like if x is, de is less than delta away from a on the left side, then f of x will be um, less than epsilon away from l. Yeah, where epsilon is any number that you might be challenged with, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's actually very similar to our other, I think this is what you were talking about before. It's very similar to our old definition. Now, you're, I'm still being challenged with an epsilon. I still must find a delta, but this time when I find my delta, only the numbers which are to the left of A are relevant. So the delta applies only on the left, right? That's intuitively what it means if my, if, if my limit from the left is L, that these numbers um, are going to land between the parallel lines. I just make no claim about what's happening to the right of A at all because it's just not, it's not under discussion. Ron, you with me? Yeah. OK, so when I go to write this out, what this is is almost the exact same thing. For all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that, um, such that for all x, now comes the crucial part where we change it a little bit. Someone? Yeah, so x, just the simple way I guess is just to say that x is somewhere in between uh, a minus delta and a, right? If x is somewhere in between a minus delta and a, then I have to land between the parallel lines. So then the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. Um, so that is our formal definition of left-hand limit, and the formal definition of right-hand limit is pretty much the same. Okay, these are a lot of like really, really hard fancy definitions. There's even one more, which I'm just going to skip. You're just going to do it yourself uh, later. Um, the limit of what it means, um, what it means for the limit um, as x goes to infinity of some function to be infinity. Right? So, for example, do you agree that it's true that the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared, for example, is infinity? Do you agree with that statement? No, I do. I agree with it. If you disagree with me, you're wrong. Um, well, uh, what you need to do is to construct a definition, a formal definition of what it means. Um, should we just do it right now? It takes five seconds. I guess we should just do it. Let's just do it. Um, here we go. Here's some function, and it's just getting bigger and bigger. Um, so, give me the, give me the formal definition. What's going on now? Someone play the game with me. Yell. Yeah. What does it mean if you think that the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared is infinity? Do you agree with that statement? <coughs> yeah, so what do you mean by that? Um, that for any m, f of. Okay. So no, f no. is like the 
y value that your function f of x needs to be able to go over. Yeah. So you kind of skip the whole game part. So you think you think oh, that the, sorry, you think that as x gets bigger and bigger, then the then the va then the function gets bigger and bigger, right? Correct. Yeah. So I say how big? You say as big as you want. As big as you want. I say okay. How about m a big? What m must you l do to what was what, what must you l do with my challenge of m? What must we do, y'all? Find an x such that x squared is greater than m. Yeah, find some place. I think you had a, you had it right before before I cut you off. You must go out far enough yeah. such that oh, such that any x after n is going to be f, f of that will be greater than m. Exactly. So this is true. This you guys following this? We're going really fast. This is true if and only if for any possible massively large number there exists some number n response such that for all x, as long as I go out beyond n, if x is bigger than big N, then the function will be bigger than big N. Okay, this is not like a really, really like theoretical stuff, and I want to actually take like a step back now. Um, so let's take a step back now and do something a little bit more concrete. There was a, there was some homework. Should we go over, let's see, let's go over the bookwork and let's save going over the worksheet to the end of class. How did the bookwork go? Those of you on the internet, hopefully you're doing your homework. Time to get it out and see if you did it right. See how the homework goes. There was like one really hard problem and then the rest of them were more chill, I think. Can we just talk about like 59 and 61? Yes, I like Fifty five was the limit as X goes to zero of uh, root X plus five minus the root five. Minus root five over x. This was one of the this was one of the hard problems, guys. Yeah, hard. Point two over. You figured it out. Yeah. Um, limit is x plus zero of root x plus five minus root five over x. Okay, what should we do? What's the first thing we should try to do always? Plug in zero. If we plug in zero, what happens? Zero over zero case. That means you need to go back and try something else. What should we try? I feel like this is not that hard. Don't we just no. multiply by the conjugate? Yeah. It just works out, right? Um, so multiply by root x plus 5 plus root 5 over root x plus 5 plus root 5. I think if I do that, that is going to be the magic algebra potion which makes this then doable. Because in the top I now get x plus 5 uh, minus 5 over x times, yeah, this is, I feel like this was not hard. Didn't we do a problem like this already? Also? Yeah. Okay. So what do I get? I get x over x um, root x plus 5 plus root 5. The x's cancel, and so my final answer is 1 over root x plus 5 plus root 5. Everybody with me? Say so yes, if you're with me. Yeah? Okay. And now I can plug in 0, and when I plug in 0, I just get 1 over 2 root 5. And just leave it like that. We're big boys and girls now. We're in capitalists. We don't need to like waste our time, you know, rationalizing. That's oh. that's for little kids. Well. Okay. okay. Well, um, or you can keep doing it. It's cool. Yeah. But you don't have to. Um, more. There was another one. Someone no, said. Let's do fifty nine. Fifty nine. I think fifty nine was also algebra. Fifty nine was the limit as x goes to zero of. 1 over 3 plus x minus a third over x? This was the problem? Yes. Okay, so try to plug in 0, what happens? 
Correct. Wah, wah, zero over zero. Back to the drawing board. Do some algebra. I think getting a common denominator seems like a good idea, so I will do that. So this is what? So this is three minus um, x plus three over three times x plus three all over um, advanced fractions going on here all over x. Yeah, yeah. No, wait, wait, wait. Wait. Is that right? Yeah. That's right. So no, I'm not waiting. Um, so this is the limit as x goes to zero of uh, I guess that's just negative x, negative x over and then 3x, x plus 3. So the x's cancel, and this becomes the limit as x goes to 0 of negative 1 over 3x plus 3. And now I can plug in the 0, and then when I do so, I'm going to get negative 1 ninth. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good? Yeah. Um, do I have to do 61 or no? No. I feel like it's the same thing. OK, but there was another problem that I think I thought was like even harder. From the previous section, number 34? I thought that was hard. Did you think that was hard? I thought it was hard. Wait, what was it? 34, it was like this, it was this fairly advanced thing. It said, um, it gave you a function, f of x equals x squared minus 1. And it said, find, de well, here's, here's the exact wording that it gives you. Uh, it says, find delta. I did assign this problem, right? Find delta such that if the distance, if if this is true, um, then uh, this is true. F of x minus three is less than 0.2. That was easy. It was easy. Did someone confirm that I did? I did assign this problem, though, right? Yes, you did. Okay, good. So if it was easy, first of all, what's going on here? Where? What are these strange numbers like? Point two and um, three and two and what's going on? Yeah, Ob. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to find um, delta. Yeah, and what's what's a? Hey, it's two, right? Yeah. So okay, that, that's. I mean, I guess. I guess Wait, maybe you guys are just smart and you just figured it out. But x squared minus one. What does it look? Uh, what does it look like? Uh, you know, it's just a parabola moved down one. So here's negative one. Uh, when I plug in one, I get um. Or when I plug in two, I get three, right? So one, two, three, one, two. So. I think that my function looks something like this. So let's just draw the right half of it. Everybody cool with me here with this? This is the function. This is x equals 1. This is x equals 2. And essentially what's going on here is we're evaluating the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 1. And we're getting that the answer is 3. Um, and what they are saying is, hey, as long as you're within delta, find a delta such that as long as you're within delta of 2, then you will be, the distance between f and 3 will be less than 0.2. Okay, so to boil this down to what's really going on, they are essentially challenging us with an epsilon of 0.2, right? Maybe you guys all just figure that out. Maybe it's not that hard. Um, once you unscramble what they're asking for, that's what they're asking for. They're challenging you with an epsilon of 0.2, and then um, what you must do to meet that challenge is you, your job um, in this problem was to find the delta such that, and I will rephrase it as find the largest possible delta such that. I don't know if the book did that or not. But on the test, I will I will ask you to find the largest possible delta such that such that if I'm within delta, then I'm with, does, everyone, does everyone understand the task now? Yep. Okay. How should we do it? How should we actually like do it? Just take that. This part? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So start with what you're trying to prove and work backwards. So let's start with the fact that absolute value f of x minus three is less than 0.2, and then just like work backwards, right? See. Okay. What do you want to do first? Then you want to put in f of x. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. x squared minus 1 
minus 3 is less than 0.2. And that's x squared minus, um, minus 4, yeah, less than 0.2. So then that means that negative, uh, x squared minus 4 is between negative 0 0.2 and 0 0.2. Yeah, this is how I do it also. So this is between negative 0 0.2 and 0 0.2. So, so like yeah, yeah. Sydney's basically just solving for x, just like it's a, you know, kind of hard, whatever, algebra 2 type problem. Okay, what next? So then x squared is between 3.8 and 4.2. Yeah, let's use fractions, oh. um, just because I feel like it. Uh, no. No, you don't want to? Yes. Do it. So, so like x squared point. is between 3.8 and 4.2. Um, what is, 3.8 is like, um, it's like 30 and 19, what happened? What? What happened? 19 fifths. Is that right? It's not. Maybe it'll be helpful though. No. And 4.2 4. is like 21 fifths, right? No. <laughs> Decimals are just ugly. I don't know, we'll see. I'll be, okay. I can be flexible. Um, now what? It's just like square root of that. Okay. I mean, it doesn't really, it doesn't. So yeah, so this will be true whenever x is between um, root 19 fifths and root 21 fifths. But it can only be one of them. Kind of disgusting a little bit, right? Okay. Well, just a little. Just like, see, it make x squared minus 4. But did you just stop at that point? Yeah, so then it can only be, it can only either be 19, square root 19 fifths away or square root. That's not exactly correct, right? right? Okay, so so what is? By the way, let's just just to get some sense of what's going on. I mean, three point eight is what is the square root of three point eight? Roughly, just roughly speaking, oh, square root of three point eight, like loosely little speaking, a little less than two. So so far things are looking pretty good, right? This is here is root three point eight, and then. And then this is root 4.2. Uh -huh. So, and what, what our algebra has just told us, what our algebra has just told us is, as long as I stay between root 19 fifths and root 21 fifths, then I will land between the parallel lines, right? Yeah, but you can't have but two that's, different. No, but also, not only is it that you can't have two different, but it's also that neither of those numbers is the correct answer to delta. Yeah, because it's Because like, delta represents how far away you're allowed to be. So it's like two minus. Two minus two. It's like two, two minus. minus. Two minus. Yeah. So what is? So let's so let's do this. How far is how far apart? What's that gap? Two plus. No, root twenty-one two. This is going to be root twenty-one fifths minus two, right? Because root twenty-one fifths is out here. So and root twenty-one fifths is bigger than two. So that that distance is is root twenty-one fifths minus two. Agree? Okay, and now it's getting kind of complicated. What's that distance? That distance is 2 minus root 19 fifths. All right. And what, I, what do I have to now, I have to choose, right? One of those numbers, uh, represents, each of those numbers is, is how far, the first one is how far to the left I'm allowed to go, the second one is how far to the right I'm allowed to go. Which one do I pick in this case? The smaller one. No, I need to pick whichever. I definitely, I definitely need to pick whichever one of these numbers is smaller, right? Because I need to be more conservative. Because I want to be, I want to be more conservative about my choice. But which one of them is smaller? It's like not totally obvious. Or it's semi-ish obvious. Okay, yeah. Wait, which one? Which one is it? Who thinks this number is smaller? Which one? I think. Right? No. No. Who thinks this number is smaller? No. Well, closer to just. Jesus, explain. Actually, well, you know that this is x squared minus 1, and you know that the farther right x squared goes, the faster it starts going up. So obviously the distance to the right is going to be smaller. Oh. Yeah, Buse is doing some calculus. He's saying things like <laughs> x squared minus 1 is like getting bigger and bigger, faster and faster, or something like so, that, right? And so since this is getting bigger and bigger, faster and faster, if I position myself at the point 2 comma 3, and I scooch a little bit to the right, I'm going to break through the top parallel line before I, if I was going a little bit to the left, before I would break out from the bottom parallel. Does that at least seem reasonable? Yeah. Okay, so that's true. In this case, using common sense and blah, 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 I think I have decided that the answer is um, the smaller of those two numbers is this one. This, this is actually the right answer. Bam. Oh. Imagine if you had that and you did all this and you got it. Okay, like seven or eight. Yes, yeah, what? Oh, why do you want to be more conservative? Because this number is bigger, right? We've decided. Do you agree with that part? Yeah. This number is bigger. But if I set delta to be that number, then I'll go out beyond. Then it won't it won't be work anymore. Because then 
if I move to the right by that larger amount, I'll no longer land between the parallel lines. So oh, this is so kind when of a fun. When you're, delta, you when you're pick picking delta. which delta, you need to pick the smaller of the two so that as long as I stay within delta, I will be guaranteed. Yeah. On a test, will you give us something crazy like this where it won't be pretty? I don't obvious? know. Maybe. Yeah. Probably like one. Yeah. There'll be like one problem like this. Um. One other thing that you might do, you could subtract two from all three sides of this inequality. I don't know if anyone thought to do that. If you subtract two from all three sides of this inequality, then you get root twenty-one fifths minus two, and over here you get uh, root nineteen fifths minus two. And now, kind of, if you sort of think about what's going on here, x minus two is sort of it's sort of like the distance x is from 2, right? And now you're saying, uh, basically now your task is to figure out which number is smaller, this number or this number, and we've re-reasoned it out, and we think that this is the smaller one, so we choose, we choose the smaller one. Um, you could also be kind of cool, and you could just say, suppose you were too lazy, or perhaps you just didn't know which one was smaller. You could be cool, you could say, well, let delta be Whichever one is smaller. <laughs> so just let it be the minimum of uh, that number, root 21 fifths minus 2, and um, that number. Although I have to flip the sign to make it positive. Because delta is supposed to be a positive number. So this is one, one possibility, is just to define delta to be whichever one is smaller of those two numbers. Yes? Wait, can you sort of reason it out? Like thinking that um, a point two change and like four point two is sort of going to be like less than like less significant than like a point two change with like three point eight going from like the I mean it's both they're both point two away from four but when you take like the square root like I don't know the way I sort of reason like root yeah four point two is because you're adding it to four yeah he's doing the opposite Busis was arguing that the square root function gets really really fast really fast. So therefore, a tiny change to the right will, cr will break free sooner. Yeah. You're doing it the reverse way. You're saying that the square root function gets smaller slower. So you're, he's saying that root 4.2 is going to be closer to 2 than root 3.8 is. Is that what you're saying, basically? Yeah. Yeah, and so that works too. That's another way of doing this. Isn't OK. Um, shall we do more things? Oh my god. Wow. It's like incredible. Um, it's like a time warp, this class. So much fun, calculus. Get carried away. What? Um, I promise you one more practical thing. This is not really practical. This is still quite theoretical. But there are other problems from this homework that we should go over? Or I thought they were kind of easy. Can we do the limit, like, worksheet? Like, can we do yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to get to that. I see there's many not... There's I a back. I did the front. Okay, you did the Yeah, front. I know. I think okay, we're going to say that to the end. Let's learn a couple things first. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's up? Uh, yeah, the people's... Six, 61? No, I don't feel like doing 61. Is it hard? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Our book does this, does this slightly annoying thing, which I don't like. Um, so this was, this was number 61. Let me just address this right now. Uh, two, and then it was like this, right? Wait, is this actually correct? Two X. X, is this what, this is what it said, exactly? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, this like looks very, very strange. Um, here's what the book is doing here, which I personally don't care for, but you better get used to it because that's what he does. He treats delta X as if it's like its own symbol. So this is meant to be interpreted as just like a, think of that as like a single character variable. Okay, and you might notice that there's also just this x in here just floating around doing nothing. What's that doing there? That's just a separate and unrelated variable. So what you were supposed to realize is that this is, well, if you first try to plug in 0 for delta x, then you get 2x minus 2x is 0. But this is actually kind of, a, this is actually kind of just a silly problem. Because when you distribute this, you get 2x plus 2 delta x minus 2x over delta x. And those just cancel. So you just get 2 delta x over delta x. Um, and the limit as delta x approaches 0. Well, those just cancel. So this is just 2. That's all there is to say about that. OK, can I have this homework? Uh, right here, please. Here's the stapler. There's a 
Like one. Has got I doubt it would be cool. Yep. Does it not exist? Yeah, it's yeah. so yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Uh, because we did some homework problems from that section. What I want to talk about right now are limit laws. Some limit laws. Um, so, um, everyone, can you also just double check that the, I'm in frame? Um, so, here is an example of a limit law. What is the limit as x approaches c of the number b? So this is, B is just like a constant. Um, this is supposed to be like kind of a silly question. B. The answer is B. Yes, some of you don't, haven't even started thinking about this yet, but Ravi's question's already done. That's because it's a pretty easy question. Um, so what does the function f of x equal B look like? It's pretty exciting. It just looks like this. It's a constant function. And then c is some number over here. So yeah, I agree, Ravi Fleischman. The limit as x approaches c of v just must be b, because it's just like, duh, right? As I get really, really close to c, the y values get really, really close to b. Could I get a proof of this? No. Yes. <laughs> yes. I can get a proof of this. It's really easy. The words what, is the, what is the, what is the, um, because what is the, what does it mean? Technically, what is the formal definition? The formal definition is, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, um, such that, uh, you know, for all x, if I am within uh, s delta of c, then my function will be within uh, epsilon of b. Okay, how do we do it? Someone challenges you with an epsilon. So B plus epsilon, B minus epsilon. What should I set my delta equal to? I know I'm going really fast, but I think this is kind of easy. What, what do I set my delta equal to? Eric, how close to A do I have to get to ensure that my Y values will remain between B minus epsilon and B plus epsilon? Anything, yes, anything. Okay, proof done. Proof done. The proof is, the answer to the proof is, just like pick your favorite number. Like, what's your, what's your, Eric, what's your favorite number? Three. Three. Two. Three. Three. Root nine. Root nine? Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that's right. Eric's favorite number is, Eric's favorite number is two. Um, and um, so, yeah, picking any number whatsoever, I will guarantee, I will guarantee to, to, to land between the parallel lines because everything lands between the parallel lines. All right, that was like really boring. Um, that proves that the limit of a constant function is just what you think it is. Okay, here's another one. What is the limit as x approaches c of x? What does that mean? C. C. Answer C. Yeah. Um, and that's because we have a function fx equals x. It looks like this. Here is C. You guys think the answer is C. Now we'll do a proof of this. Proof in quotes. We're just going to talk it out. Um, I challenge you with an epsilon, um, and you must have a delta response prepared. What is going to be your delta response to my epsilon challenge? Epsilon. Epsilon. Yeah, Buses gets it, inflation get it. Do you have the rest of you get it too? No. Because the slope is just one, then um, then this line is just like, you know, kind of boring, right? Um, any number, you, if you challenge me with one tenth, well, I'm just going to respond oh, yeah. with one tenth. Because it'll just work out perfectly, right? Yo. What's it feels like x plus would be the same thing. Yep, 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 yep. Um, okay, so those are some basic things. Here's another thing which sounds really reasonable. Um, it is the, that the limit as x approaches a of the sum of two functions. 
What do you think this is? The limit sum. Yeah, that's true. Um, kind of, that, is, that is absolutely correct. The limit of the sum of two functions is just the sum of the limits. My common sense talkie proof of this is that uh, if as x gets really, really close to a, um, the sum of these two functions gets really close to some number. <laughs> uh, it's not even yeah, worth talking about. Okay, it's just I like duh. You. you believe me? Yeah, mm -hmm. good. Good. Um, you can do a proof of this. Um, it's a little bit hard, and it takes, I don't know, 15 minutes. So I'm skipping it right now because it's kind of hard, and we've done a lot of really, really theoretical stuff today, and we're running out of time. But um, if you'd like to know what it is, you can try it on your own. You can look in the book. I think it's in the appendix, or you can ask me, or we can do it. Yo. Isn't it just the, the distributive property? No, it's a little bit complicated because, look, what's required is an epsilon delta no. proof, right? No. So Eo no. is taunting me to start it. No. 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 I'm just start it. No. I'm just going to start it. No. No. One minute. Someone yeah. set, your, set your clock for one minute. Yeah. So here's what we do. Uh, Eo, we suppose that this limit is L. And we suppose that this limit is m, right? So yes, just talking to you, man. just me and you. Uh, this is l, this is m. So what I really need to prove is I need to prove that this equals l plus m. Okay? So okay. So if so, on the assumption that this limit. Oh, and this brings up an important point. You guys shouldn't be zoning on completely. This limit rule works provided that these two limits exist. So assuming that this limit exists and this limit exists then this limit is the sum of those two limits. So since this limit exists, then for any epsilon, there is some delta that works here. And since this limit exists, for any epsilon, there is some delta. And then what you must do to prove that this limit is L plus M is you must show that for any epsilon, and you have to find some delta such that this function always lies between L and M. So it's actually a little bit, it's actually somewhat complicated at high level activity. Yes, yeah, L. So let's say F and X and DNA. How long was that? 58 seconds. 58 seconds. I promise you guys. You don't. You never believe me. Yeah. Like let's say the other negative infinity. Yeah. No. Not allowed. It must exist. No. But I'm not getting into that right now. But the, the law says that if they both exist. Okay. Let's move on. 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 Um, so the sum of the limits is, um, or the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. Um, there are some other limit laws. Here's one. Um, so let's just call this like limit rule one or something. Let's call this like limit rule two. Let's call this limit rule three. Here's a limit rule four. Uh, the limit as x approaches a of a constant times a function. Um, what do you think that is? Yeah. yeah. This is just b times the limit as x approaches a. Of this uh, again, this rule is applicable provided that the limits exist. Uh, and again, bless you, if you Thank wanted you. to do this properly, you would have to do an epsilon delta proof of this, right? You would assume that this limit exists and is equal to, for example, L. And then you would argue that this limit is B times L. And you'd have to do an epsilon delta proof. It's not that hard. You can do it. It takes a little bit of work. Whatever. Um, I believe.